Good morning, Father's house. Did y'all wake up this morning with that nice, crispy, cold fall air? Man, what an amazing time. But all it does is tell us that the seasons change, and the seasons that are changing bring growth. So that which is dormant underneath can come up to the surface and manifest and come out and say hello to the world. So, Father, we thank you this morning that you're causing growth in us here at the Father's house as we come and say, Holy Spirit, thank you for your presence this morning and that you're just wrapping your arms around us this morning. Amen. Come on, put your hands together as we enter in. Be a weapon that silences the enemy. 
Let praise be a weapon that conquers all anxiety. Let it rise. Let praise arise. We sing your name in the dark and it changes everything. We sing with all we are and we claim your victory. So let it rise. Praise arise. We'll see you break down every wall. We'll watch the giants fall. We cannot survive when we praise you. The God of breakthroughs on my side. Forever lift him high. With all creation, my God, we praise you. Let faith be the song that calms the storm inside of me. Let it rise. Let faith arise right now. We'll see you break down every wall. We'll watch the giants fall. Fear cannot survive when we praise you. The God of breakthroughs on. contain their praise and we're gonna sing that we're gonna sing I can't hold back my praise I gotta let it out and I just want to encourage you that if that if that's not something that you're in that that's a common practice with you can I just tell you that it is so freeing it is so freeing and really you just you're gonna have to get used to it because this is what we're gonna do we're going to worship him. We're going to praise. We're going to shout. We're going to clap. We're going to raise our hands because this is the worship and the praise that God desires. Amen. So I want us to sing this. I can't hold back my praise. I got to let, why hold it back? 
Why hold it back? Just let it go. I can't hold back my praise. I gotta let it out. I can't hold back my praise. I gotta let it out. I can't hold back my praise. I gotta let it out. I can't hold back my praise. I gotta let it out. I can't hold back my praise. I gotta let it out. I can't hold back my praise. I gotta let it out. I can't hold back my praise. I gotta let it out. I can't hold back my praise. I gotta let it out. I can't hold back my praise. I gotta let it out. I can't hold back my praise. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you, we praise you. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you, we praise. We'll see you break down every wall. We'll watch the giants fall. Fear cannot survive when we praise you. The God of breakthroughs on our side. Forever lift him high. With all creation cry, God, we praise you. Oh, 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 oh. we praise you. Oh, 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 oh. we praise you. Oh, 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 oh. we praise you. Oh, breakthrough is on your side. Have you ever thought about that? God of the breakthrough is on your side. Some of you have been waiting for a breakthrough, but I'll tell you what else you've been waiting on is you've been waiting on the breakthrough to start your praising. And God said, no, nope, you need to praise before the breakthrough. Praise him before the breakthrough. God is good. He's got good plans for you. And sometimes when he takes us on a little bit of a windy road, it's for our good. So see the breakthrough out there, but praise him before the breakthrough. So I'm going to pray for some of you. I'm not going to make you raise your hand, but I know there's people here today that you have a hard time praising before the breakthrough. You're all in when the breakthrough happens. You're all in when the miracle happens. You're all in when the thing goes your way. But God said, I need you to praise me before, before the breakthrough, before you see the miracle. So I'm going to pray this morning, God, those that are having a difficult time praising you before the breakthrough, Father, would you show them that you are good and every good and perfect gift comes from you, Father, and that you uh, have a good plan for them, that, that while they praise you, they're opening up things. They're opening up things. As Pastor Andrea taught us last week, God, that as we fast and we pray and we praise, that's when things happen. And so I pray for those that have a hard time with that, that they can praise you in the midst of the storm and for certain praise you on the outside when they get to the other side after the breakthrough after the miracle but Lord for those of us that need that that help to praise through and praise before I thank you Lord that you're touching each and every one and we continue to pray for those that aren't feeling well we know we've got a lot of people that are sick that aren't feeling well some people that are at home watching online because you can't be here we pray for you we pray that God's healing touch would flow over your body. We pray specifically for Pastor Tim as he's in recovery after the surgery on his hand and, uh, and the whole family, for Brenda and for, they lost a family member, then uh, Brenda's mom is in the hospital. So we're praying for them as well. And I know little Knox, uh, Casey and, and Chris's son, is, is sick. So Lord, anybody that needs your healing touch, we come as a body right now, believers, praying your word that says by your stripes we were made whole and so we believe it we speak it we declare it God and we thank you in advance we praise you before the breakthrough and we thank you father for manifestation of that healing 
whoever needs it, God. Thank you for the testimonies that will come forth because of it. And we thank you, God, that you love us, you care for us, and you have a good plan and a good purpose. In Jesus' name. Now let's continue to praise God. And some of you that need to come forth, do something you've never done in worship. Do something you've never done to break that barrier. The enemy wants to keep you separated from God. Let's continue to worship. Yeah. 
coming after me There's no shadow you won't light up Mountain you won't climb up Coming after me There's no wall you won't kick down Lie you won't tear down Coming after me You know what I really felt like in these, sitting in these lyrics? That there's no shadow that he won't light up you know, I really just got this picture of that we can look at things that he presses on and lights up as a, ooh, I don't want to go there and I don't want to deal with that. But what this is saying is that there is nothing in the darkness that he will not light up for your benefit. And sometimes I think that we look at it in the wrong way we look at it as something that is not good but it is the very best because he is a good and loving father and the way he corrects and the way that he wants us to grow and the way that he he wants us to get from here to here from glory to glory there's got to be some growth and what he's saying in this song I don't know if this was the intention of the writer but this is what I am sensing that the intention is right now in this moment that he is going to expose anything and everything for my benefit and for your benefit because he wants each and every one of us to live free. So there is no shadow he won't light up. There is no mountain that he won't climb up for him to then remove. There's no wall that he won't kick down to get to you and to me because he loves each and every one of us so much. It's like the story of the prodigal son in the Gospels where he says, you know, he, he had his inheritance, but he went and he squandered it and he, he came to his senses and realized, I got to get back to my dad, but I'm feeling kind of like shame. So he comes back to the father and I can just imagine that he was walking down the road back to his father's house with his head hung low in shame and guilt and remorse. But scripture says that the father, after seeing the son afar off, came running. The father came running. So if that's the place that you're in right now, that you just feel so ridden with guilt and shame and remorse and regret, know that your father sees you from afar off because you have gone afar off and that's okay. But he's saying, I'm not gonna leave you there, my son or my daughter. I am running. I am running after you. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. Sing this truth out. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up. Remind him today. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, you come back to me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, you're coming after me.
love that will never go away and will never stop loving you. Amen? Before you take a seat this morning, why don't you turn around to a few of your neighbors, welcome them today, tell them you're so glad that they chose that seat next to you, and tell them, get ready to hear the Word of God. Good morning. How's everybody? So good to see you. Can I just say I love our worship team? I hope you do too. Wow. We are honored and blessed to have them. And thank you, Pastor Andrea, for leading us into the throne room of God. And I hope you sense the presence of God in this place. You know, uh, not everybody, not everywhere has such an anointed and blessed worship team. So thanks again. It makes it easy to, uh, to worship. But I just want to welcome you to the Father's house. I'm Pastor Anita. I'm married to Pastor Terry. We are the founding senior pastors here at the church. If it's your very first time to be with us, we want to welcome you, say thank you for coming. Uh, we're here to help you uh, in your journey, wherever you are. So we would love for you to fill out a connection card. Matter of fact, everybody takes out a connection card and fills it out. And please, everyone, hold it till the end. I'll tell you why in just a moment. But if it's your first time to be with us, fill that card out with as much info as you feel comfortable with, and you're gonna take your card, because you're a first time guest, you're gonna take it out to our new here, start here table, which is out in the foyer, and we have some gifts that we would like to give you. So um, everybody else, go ahead and fill your card out. Maybe you have a question, a prayer request or something, but we're a church of next steps, and so we want everybody to take a next step, and one way to do that is to write it down. We don't share this with everybody. It's between you and God, and if you want it to be confidential, then nobody will see it. We do have a prayer team that prays over your prayer requests, but go ahead and fill your card out, and then you you can, after your next step, uh, directed by Pastor Terry, you can put yours in the containers on the way out at the end of the service. So we love to give around here. We just, um, we just live to give and we love to give. And one of the ways that you can give is this food drive. We're trying to help out local food banks. They're at a shortage, usually uh, all the time, but mostly as Thanksgiving is coming up. So uh, if you would bring in non-perishable food items, we're going to collect those until November 14th. That's a way of giving. Please don't give the old stuff. I've got plenty of old stuff in the back of my uh, cabinet. I actually still eat it, but I'm not bringing that. I'm getting new stuff for the food drive. Make sure that it's not expired and bring in the non-perishable food items. We're going to just overwhelm them with, uh, with those things. Uh, another way that we love to give is by our tithe and offering. You guys are great givers. We appreciate your heart to give. And God said if you're a cheerful giver, that's what he really likes. So you know that tithe is 10%. 10% of your increase is what you bring back to the storehouse. Uh, we don't take a tithe. We receive the tithe. God said bring it back to the storehouse. So 10%, the first 10% of what you make, uh, whatever your income is, if you're working, if you get a monthly check, if you sell something, whatever your income um, that's what you tithe on. Pastor Terry and I tithe on gifts. So for all those wonderful, fabulous gifts that you've given us for pastor appreciation, first of all, thank you. And we will tithe on that increase um, because you can't outgive God. So there's four different ways that you can give. You can do it online. You can text. You can do it in person with that envelope that's in the chair. Or you can take it home with you if you're not ready. You can send it back. It's postage paid but God loves to give and he loves givers, as I mentioned, cheerful givers. So as you are putting your giving into the container and you're holding on to your connection card, you're putting your giving in, I wanna pray over you uh, and uh, just ask God to bless. So Father, thank you. Go ahead, ushers. Father, thank you for blessing each and every giver in the house, whether it's 
here in person, whether it's online uh, or maybe someone's going to do it later. But Lord, you said that you would give seed to the sower and then we pray a harvest back as a return for those that are giving. We thank you for each and every one. We pray favor and blessings. You said to test you. And so that's what uh, some people do. But you said you'd open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing we can't contain. And that's what I pray over every tither and giver in the house. In Jesus' name we pray. Now we got a few things happening. Don't forget to go to our website, scroll all the way to the bottom. All the events are there, but there's one coming up that's, you're running out of time. If you don't sign up today by midnight, you are going to be left out. This is a life-changing event, so watch this video. Hey, Father's House Church, Pastors Kevin and Lisa here. We can't wait to be with you in November. One of the sessions we're going to be sharing in marriage, which is one of our favorite subjects. Right. We love marriage. We fight for marriage because we know what it takes to have a great marriage. We want to give you tools in order to have the great success that God has given us in doing marriage the right way. Yes. You know, you go to a lot of these places and they'll tell you, you know, they'll beat the husband up or they'll just, you know, really get on the wives. That's not what we want to do. We know what it is to have a bad marriage. We know what it is to learn to have a great marriage. We can't wait to be with you to inspire you to have the best marriage possible. We say God bless you. Well, today's the last day of this series. I think we've been here, what, 14 weeks. And of course, on Wednesday nights, with our first Wednesday, we're going to continue to talk about Holy Spirit and, uh, and the gifts. And we'll do that again this Wednesday night. It's going to be an awesome time. But thank you for being here today. Those of you that are watching online, it's good to see you. Somebody said, oh, it's Halloween. You dressed up like a real pastor today. Uh, so anyway for whatever that means, but it's uh, so good to see you, and those of you that are watching online, God bless you today, and we're wearing the pink because October is Breast Cancer Awareness, Breast Cancer Awareness, right? Did I say that right? Okay, and so we've been dropping in all of our change, and of course, next month is uh, cancer uh, men are struggling with, so that's what we do with all of our change, and we appreciate you doing that. Thank you so much. And Andrea, what a great teaching last week. Wasn't that great? Wow. Wow. Such good revelation. Hey, you have your Bible with you, uh, your iPhone, your iPad, whatever you use, your eyeballs. Let's lift it up. Let's set together. This is my Bible. It is the Word of God. It is life to me. Today I receive the Word. I confess my mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I am obedient, and I will never be the same again in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we just love you. We thank you, Father, that you found us. You climbed the mountains, you pushed the doors open, and you found us, Lord. So we just are so thankful. And we thank you, Lord, that you sent your Holy Spirit to empower us, to give us the power to serve you, that we're not weakling, that we're not alone, but you've given us the power. So, Lord, as we address this teaching today, the last in this Sunday series, I pray, Lord, you'll take my words, add your anoint those, anointing to those that they become supernatural words that changes lives today in your name, Jesus. Hey, you know, as we've been looking at this for 14 weeks, I'd like for you to answer one question, and you can just write it there on your notes or even on your connection card with you if you would like. I'd like for you to answer this question. How has this series changed me? Or you might just say, I've been changed by this series by. How, how have you been changed? Would you just write that down? Just, just think about it. Now, 14 weeks, and if you say, well, I have no real change, then I've failed. Uh, but I know I may fail, but the Holy Spirit doesn't. But how has he changed you? How has this series changed you? Would you write that down? Because it's, it's not just about information. In fact, D.L. Moody, an evangelist of the 19th century, said this. The Bible was not given for our information, but for our transformation. The Bible was not given for our information, but for transformation. There are a lot of people that have a lot of information. We have information overload. But information 
precedes transformation, right? So how are you transformed? How have you been transformed in this series? Uh, Paul had a heart for this, for people to be transformed. He said in 1 Corinthians 12 and 1, now concerning spiritual gifts, brother and sisters, I don't want you to be uninformed. In other words, he says, I want, I want you to have all that God wants you to have. Amen? Let me just, let me show that. Let me put this into perspective maybe. You know, I have a, a nice, I asked for a nice meal today from Gourmet Today from uh, Jesse. In fact, Jesse is uh, uh, supplying the food for our married couple's date night. And uh, that's going to be a great event. It happens uh, not next week, the week after. In fact, how many of you that are married are signed up? Hold your hand up real high or signed up for the married couple's date night, okay? Married people's date night. All right, look around. Look around. Uh, uh, why aren't, isn't your hand up if you're married? What, what's, what's up with you? Oh, I know. I have a perfect marriage. I don't need to go married couple's date night. Good. I need you. You might l rub off on me, all right? Oh, so I, I, I don't understand I don't understand why anyone who would call the Father's house their home and we would have an event that wouldn't show up for that event unless you're going to be out of town or you didn't know about it. So I'm just calling. I'm not calling you out. I'm calling you up today. And people say, well, you know, we just, uh, you know, I don't know. And, and so here, here's, here's what happens. People say, well, I'm not sure I want to go to that. I'm not sure what I can get from that. But maybe it's not what you can get from it. Maybe it's what you give to somebody else. You say, well, I've been to date nights. I've been to these things for years. Well, good. You're one up on everybody else. Then why not? I, I, I believe we should have at least 50 couples there. We're almost there. We had 10 couples, 10 more couples sign up in the last service. And uh, so I'm just encouraging you, take out your phone now, go to the Father's House website, scroll down to the area where you can sign up and show up and show your face up Friday night and Saturday morning and make a difference with your life and in your marriage. Invest in your marriage. If you can't make it financially, just send us a text this week and we'll do everything we can to try to help you with that but invest in your marriage so somebody said oh I saw you wore a suit today so I know you're going to call some people out today listen you say well I, I'm, I'm really I'm really upset that you called me out good stand in line you won't be the first person or the last person I've ever offended but I cannot understand for the life of me that if you call this your the father's house your home that you wouldn't sign up for events that we have, okay? Is that all right? Well, we'll have an altar service at the end if you need to ask forgiveness, all right? So anyway, so I got this meal. Some people view the Holy Spirit like, like a meal. They say, wow, you know, I've got here, I've got the meat, the potatoes, I've got all the stuff that's just right, you know, I, I believe in coming to church, I believe in reading the Bible, I believe in giving, I believe, uh, you know, in caring for people, winning the lost, and uh, those are all the meat and potatoes of being a Christian. But dessert is option. Dessert is option. Now, I'm not talking about the caloric intake. I really understand I'm doing a, a, a metaphor today. This dessert represents the Holy Spirit. A lot of people will say, I'll sit down, and I'm, I'm for the basics, for what I was taught when I was a Christian. But you know, this Holy Spirit is sort of like an option. It's like, oh, it's all right for, it's all right for Lissa. It's all right for Mike. Uh, you know, they, they enjoy, he likes the Holy Spirit, he likes the spiritual gifts. But for me, I'm just kind of a meat and potatoes, and let me just stay in my comfort zone of the meat and the potatoes. So then what you're telling me is, Jesus really made a mistake by sending the Holy Spirit. Look, dessert, dessert, you can tell, dessert is not an option. You see, eating is an Olympic spiritual gift for me, all right? So you, so you know that. So it's not. So here's what I'm saying. Don't let the enemy tell you, 
Don't let the enemy tell you that Holy Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit are optional. They're not optional. They don't make you any more saved. They don't make you a greater believer, but they help you be who God has created you to be. I was reading the last couple of weeks about a recent study they've done over six different continents. And over six different continents in multiple languages, they did an empirical study, a sociological study, not an opinion poll, to find out why churches grow. They did studied American churches, they studied international churches, they studied big churches, small churches, charismatic churches, non-charismatic churches, and they came out with eight basic things, characteristics of why churches grow. But the number one reason that churches grow, regardless of charismatic or non-charismatic, is simply this. Listen, is that those churches that grow are gift-oriented. In other words, they encourage people to find your gift and serve God in the areas of your giftedness. In fact, Christian Swartz wrote a book about that called Natural, Natural Church Growth as a result of that study. And he said, when Christians serve in their area of giftedness, they generally function less in their own strength and more in the power of the Holy Spirit because they accomplish extraordinary things And he said, then because they use their gift, they're more contented than other people that don't. God is a giver. Would you say that with me? God is a giver. First of all, what did he do? He gave us eternal life, right? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, Romans 6 and 23. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. And then Ephesians 2 and 8, God saved you by his grace. God saved you by his grace when you believed. You can't take credit for this. It's a what? A gift from God. If the Lord and you've received the gift of eternal life, would you just say right now, thank you, Lord. Thank you for eternal life. Thank you that my eternity is settled and I have a reason to live now. And so God gives eternal life, but he also gives Holy Spirit. Look at Acts 1 and 8. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be, the rest of that says, my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, Samaria, to the end of the earth. So God is a giver. He gives me eternal life. And then he gives the Holy Spirit to those that we're baptized in or with the Holy Spirit. And then he gives us spiritual gifts, say spiritual gifts. Here's that fill-in in your notes. A spiritual gift is a special supernatural ability. In other words, it's beyond you. It's not just something you can do by yourself. A special supernatural ability that God gives to each of his children so that together we can do what? Advance his purposes in the world. Read that with me. Spiritual gift is a special supernatural ability that God gives to each of his children so that together we can advance his purposes in the world. Now let's say it again, everybody, those of you that were just reading and making yourself aware with that, let's say it together. A spiritual gift is a special supernatural ability that God gives to each of his children so that together we can advance his purposes in the world. So that together, together, not alone, but together we can include his, we can achieve his purposes. Uh, According to Fuller Theological Seminary, they've done a a study recently and they found that 80% of people that call themselves Christians 80% of people who call themselves Christians don't know what their spiritual gift is and therefore never use their spiritual gift. That's not the statistics here. I'm sure that we're much better than that. So that's what that's saying is that in most of the average churches in America, only 20% of people use the gift that God has placed in them for the benefit of others and to advance the kingdom. I I just want you to say this with me. Let's do something to make a difference. Or let's just personalize it. I will do something to make a difference. 1 Corinthians 12 and 1 says, Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I don't want you to be ignorant. I don't want you to be in the dark. I don't want you to be confused. And then in verse 7, he says this, A spiritual gift 
is given to almost everybody who is spiritual. A spiritual gift is given to those that have, are extreme extroverts. A spiritual, read it with me. A spiritual gift is given to each of us so that we can help each other. So how are you doing with that? That's one of the, one of the things I said about the, the, the married couple's date night. You may have a spiritual gift sit down beside somebody, and they say, you know what, I've been dealing with this. I've been, you know what, we've dealt with that before, and God has helped us. So you become an encourager using a spiritual gift to help somebody else. Here at the Father's house, we want you to belong and contribute. Belong, say belong, and do something to make a difference. The Father's house is not a place for you to become and be a consumer. It's not the show. You didn't come to see the show, not to sit, sip, soak, and watch. But you want to belong and you want to contribute. Why? Because he said, I've deposited a spiritual gift in all of my believers so they can use that spiritual gift to help others and to advance the kingdom. In other words, we can't be who God wants us to be without you if God has placed you here. You say, well, what do I need to do? Well, here's a way to start. Write this down. Be a bringer. Be a bringer. Be a bringer. We should write a song about that. Everybody ought to be a bringer, a bringer, a bringer. Uh, yeah, I, no, Andrew, Andrew says that's a start, right? All right. Be a bringer. Be a bringer. Use the cards that we have out there to invite people. Or if you go out to lunch, use the one that says something extra to show you that God loves you and leave a nice tip, right? Be a bringer. Invite someone. Invite somebody to church. Bring them. That means you, you, you can just pray that the Lord gives me the right words to say. And, and I'm sure every service that we give an invitation to someone, but be a bringer. Be a bringer. It starts there. And second of all, I'm just going to ask you to be a partner with me. A part Scripture says, if any two agree is touching anything. So I think, I think it should be a requirement. In the future, I think this should be a requirement. I'll talk to the elders about this. Okay. That everybody who attends the Father's house needs to come up here on a Sunday morning and say a few words and watch your face. <laughs> everybody ought to be required during worship time to stand beside Andrea and sing. And watch your reaction. Have you ever done that? I'll pick on the first service. In that first service, there's a bunch of people who stand. They grab the chair in front of them. And the whole time we're worshiping the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, and all that, they're going. <laughs> but yet we're partners. We're partners. Now, you can imagine being Andrea, so excited, worshiping, stomping her foot, you know, singing that smile, and look out at you, and you're going. <laughs> you say, well, it's just not my style to worship, you know, to be engaged. Your style? When did it become about you? I thought worship was about the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. I thought... I thought he wrote a book of what, about 150 chapters? And in those 150 chapters, he never says one thing, worship is about you and how you style. He says in 150 chapters, this is how I like worship. I like men to lift up holy hands. I like people to sing with a voice. I like people to dance in the spirit. I like people to sing in the spirit and sing with their understanding. That's what he says, right? So you just watch Andrea. You watch how much better she and the team get when you partner with them on a Sunday morning. And second of all, I'm going to ask you to partner with me and whoever is speaking. You say, okay, you studied all week long, big boy. Now show us what you've learned. So what's the difference of that and watching a TED talk? Besides, they're a whole lot shorter than me. No. God brought you here of all the places you could be on a Sunday to partner with me. And you say, well, how do I partner with you? You, first of all, engage with me. That, that, that's, that's a good start right there, to engage in the teaching, to watch the teaching. It's all right to say, 
Amen. It's all right to clap your hands as long as it's not a golf clap. My God doesn't deserve a golf clap, and I don't either. I've worked too hard all week long for a golf clap. I told you if I could offend you, I probably will offend you, so stand in line. But here's what I notice, that when people engage in the teaching, taking notes, uh, putting that in, that a lot of times people will say to me after service, wow, man, I, I never heard what you just said like that. And, and God said to me, and they'll tell me, and I'm thinking in the recesses of my mind, uh, I didn't say that but I'm not going to tell them that. I'm going to let them think I'm really smart. <laughs> but here's what I've learned. When people engage with this word, these scriptures, and the teaching, God somehow speaks an individual word to you. And you know how you hear it? You hear it from this sermon. Why? Because you've been engaged in that teaching. So you see, when unbelievers come in our midst, they may be sitting here, but what happens is, when you engage with the teaching, and you engage with me, or you engage in the worship, uh, first of all, the sermon gets shorter. Second of all, th then, it, then it affects other people. So I'm just asking you not to just come and sit, but to engage. Is that all right? Is that all right? And I, you know... I just love you guys so much. You just never know how much that I love you. Even those of you that can't come to church, you're watching online and you engage all the time. Let me show you some pictures of some of my favorite people. Now, this is not all my favorite people. This is part of our count team. Look at those ladies. All right, there's part of our worship team. Isn't that great? Look at that smile. Oh, people who work with kids. Man, I love that. And here's our production team. Nothing would get any farther than in here if we didn't have the production team. And they're the cleaning team, you know. Oh, look, the green. Aren't you glad you don't even have to open the door here? Look at those working next door with our kids. Whoa! And our high-powered golf cart training you around our security. And there's Miss Danielle working with our kids. And there's, uh, all, look at there. There's, there's a guy that's really strong cleaning up our mess. <laughs> look at all these wonderful people. Aren't you thankful for everybody that's found their place to serve at the Father's house? Would you give the Lord a hand clap? Yeah! So what about you? I know we didn't get around to everybody. You say, well, I didn't see my picture up there, but I saw you in my mind. I saw you in my mind because you're serving. But what about you? Have you found your place? We're talking about serving God with this. So you say, well, what should I do? Number one, here it is. Discover the gifts that God has for me. Would you say that? Discover the gifts that God has for me. Discover the gifts that God has for me. Because he created me. He created me. Romans 12 and 6 says, in his grace, God has given different gifts for doing certain things well. So if God has given you the ability to prophesy, to speak out in faith, to serve, do that. I, I'm, I'm thankful that when I finish today, I walk away from here while I'm talking to you right now. Inside my mind, I'm, I'm thinking to this to myself. I was made for this. I was made for this. Now, Sunday afternoon, I'm ready to quit. Because on Sunday afternoon, I think of all the things that I said that were stupid, that were wrong, and, and didn't really work. Uh, but right now, I, I just really say, I'm made for this. And like some of you, I know you're made for how you serve. I, when I watch some of these ushers, and I watch some of the people who work with kids, I, and I just know, man, they were made for this. I know Danielle said once, she said, you know, it's just, it just brings joy to me uh, that, that I'm able to serve and, and to work with these little kids. And I'm so thankful for all of those who work in Kids City for Kids because you wouldn't want me to be next door in Kids City. I would take all the duct tape that we have and I would have them all duct taped to the wall and quiet in the midst of that. And I'm saying, thank you, God, for giving us people that have a gift to work with kids. You wouldn't want me standing beside Andrea. Now, I could match her excitement, but I couldn't match her level of worship. And you wouldn't want me behind that set of drums. I might try that sometime. 
Psalm 139 says this. Boy, I love this passage. I love this. For you formed, David is talking to God. For you formed my inward parts. You covered me in my mother's womb. He said, before I was ever born, you already had in mind my gifts, my personality, how that people see me. Even before you were born, he said, that person's going to be an introvert. But with their giftings of being an introvert, they're going to be able to do something that loudmouth extroverts can't do. And then some of you that are extroverts and you walk in a room and you captivate the whole room. Before you were ever born, God made you that way. He didn't make you like somebody else. So he said, when I realized that, he said, then... I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. He said, when I understand that before I was ever born, you created me in such a way that I'm not like anybody else. And he said, I celebrate that. I guess it's a difference in how that men, when they look at themselves in a mirror, and how women look at themselves in a mirror. Most men look at themselves in a mirror, and they say, I still got it. Yeah, it's not quite a six-pack anymore. It's more like a keg. (laughs) But I've got it. I've got it. And then women, most women, look in the mirror and say, oh, there's another wrinkle. There's another gray hair. (laughs) Did I always look like this? (laughs) Sorry, ladies. I'm not picking on you. But here's what I'm saying. As a believer, when you look in the spiritual mirror and you're disappointed and you have no fulfillment and you feel like you're just wandering around, this scripture says the fulfillment of your life happens when you understand why God made you and what he, what he made you to do on this planet Earth. Do something. Make a difference. He said, marvelous are your works and that my soul knows well. My frame was not hidden from you. I was made in secret, skillfully wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Your eyes saw my substance yet being unformed. And in your book, they were all written, the days fashioned before me. He's saying, God, I understand you've got a book and it's got my name on it and it's got some great things in my life. Now what happens is sometimes in God's book, we start writing our own chapters, chapter five, and six and we move away from what he wants us to do but here's what I love about God he's able to climb any mountain he's able to push down any wall to write the last chapter in your life to match up with what he saw before you were ever born isn't that awesome isn't that awesome Wow. So you may be sitting here today and think, I'm such a loser. I've got nothing to... No, no, no. He's already written the last chapter, and he says, it's going to be okay. I have a place for you. I have a purpose for you. And while you're here, you're going to make a difference in people's lives. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. 1 Peter 4 and 10 says... God has given each of you a gift from his great variety of spiritual gift. Use them to serve one another. That's why you need to go to growth track. Growth track happens every first, second, third, fourth, and then uh, after the January, it'll be every fifth Sunday with the Holy Spirit. And when we go through growth track, you'll learn how to get connected with a local church and then find your place. In the New Testament, there are no lone rangers. Everybody in the New Testament was part of a local church. If you're not part of a local church, the question is, why? Some of you have been hurt. Some of you have been offended. Some of you didn't realize that it was so important. There are over 30 verses in the New Testament that you can never fulfill unless you're part of a local church. There are over 30 verses in the New Testament that you will never fulfill unless you're part of a local church. So if it's not this one, you need to find a church that you love. You love the leadership. You love the vision. You love the things that they do. There's no church that's going to be perfect, but it'll be perfect for you. So we're saying if the Father's house is not the place for you, then don't waste your time here. 
This is who we are. This is how we do things. We're loud. We're boisterous. We're in your face. We try to be as real as we can. We open our door for all kinds of people. You can wear a suit or you can wear a Harley vest and leather jacket if you want, all right? Because we're open up. And it's not just for white people, black people, brown people. It's for all people. That's who we are. It's not just for young people or old people. That's who we are. So I'm simply saying... If we're too loud for you and we don't fit you, i got a lot of great pastors in this town that I can recommend you go, but you need to find a place where you can belong, where you can be part of something that's making a difference in this world. That's what our growth track is all about. Because in growth track, here's what you'll discover. God's design in me reveals God's destiny for me, how he made me. So number one, Discover the gifts that God has for me. Number two, develop the gifts that he's given me. Develop the gifts. Once I understand how that he has made me, then I want to develop those gifts. Romans 12, 6 and 8. Listen to this passage. It's a long passage, but boy, I love this. In this way, we're like various parts of a human body. In other words, everybody here that's a believer, you're part of a, this body, right? If this is where God has put you. So, so I'm glad you showed up today because without you, maybe the liver wouldn't be here today. Without you, maybe the heart wouldn't be here today, all right? So it says each part gets its meaning from the body as a whole, not each other, not, one, or not the other way around. The body we're talking about is Christ's body of chosen people. Each of us finds our meaning and function as part of his body. But as a chopped off finger, Pastor Tim, or a cut off toe, we wouldn't amount to much, would we? marvelously we couldn't function as Christ's body. Let's just go ahead and be what we were made to be without being envious, pridefully comparing ourselves to others, or trying to be something we aren't. If you preach, just preach God's message. Nothing else. If you, if you help, just help. Don't try to take over. If you teach, stick to your teaching. If you give encouraging guidance, be careful that you don't get bossy. If you're put in charge, don't manipulate. If you're called to give aid to people in distress, keep your eyes open and be quick to respond. If you work with the disadvantaged, don't let yourself get irritated with them or depressed with them. Keep a smile on your face. Maybe you know your giftings, but you're not doing anything about that. Let me encourage you. Let me encourage you. Discover and develop your gifts. And number three, use your gifts that God has, I use the gifts that God has given me. For those of you that have a Baptist background, let me give you the third D so to help you make you feel a little bit better, all right? Discover the gifts, develop the gifts, and then deploy the gifts. Oh, there's a big word. In fact, next week is going to be a time which we honor all of our veterans and those that are in the military. And uh, I encourage you, wear what part of your uniform you can wear. And if you're watching online, would you send us a picture? If you're not able to be here next week, we want to honor you. And while we're just sitting here, Father's House, would you give a warm thank you for all of those who have served or are serving in our nation right now? It's going to be awesome next week to do that. So deploy the gifts. When we exercise our motivational gift through our ministry, this is the next fill-in. Gifts, then, of the Holy Spirit determines what manifestations or effect that will happen to the believer. So what's the goal of my gift? Is it just so that I can say I have this spiritual gift? No, it's to advance the kingdom and to help one another. We say it like this around the Father's house. We're leading people into a growing relationship, right? Say that with me. Leading people into a growing relationship. And we do that how? Three ways. We love God, we love people, and we make disciples. So the first step is, if you don't know Jesus, the first step is that you receive eternal life. And then you receive the Holy Spirit into your life at conversion. And then also, he baptizes you in or with the Holy Spirit. You start there. Hey, aren't you thankful for people who stepped out and used their gifts to make a difference in the body of Christ. Aren't you thankful? And let me introduce you to a, to a couple of people this morning. First of all, not able to be here today because her son is sick, but this is Casey. This is Casey. This is the better half of Pastor Chris, all right? 
she has an elementary degree. She works in marketing. She works in so many things in the world's economy. But she's volunteering beginning this month, November, to be our administrative director of Kid City from kindergarten through the sixth grade. She's a volunteer, works a full-time job, but she's going to be the administrative director. And, uh, and so what a, what a great gift. Simply step up and say, I want to use my gifts to make a difference. And I want to introduce you again. You've heard her testimony before, but Rochelle, would you come on up and, and join me right now? And, uh, and I, I appreciate you. Come on, give, give Rochelle a hand. I want, to, I want to thank God. Now, Rochelle... Uh, full-time business owner, uh, full-time husband, you got to keep straight. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. A lot of great families. Yes. And you're one of our lead ushers on yes. Sunday morning, right? Yes. But yet, she has a heart for TFH youth. And beginning uh, in November, she's going to be the administrative director of TFH youth. Would you give the Lord a hand clap for that? Now, my question to you is, don't you have enough to do? Oh, yes. Well, why would you want to, do, why would you want to volunteer and take on more responsibilities in, in this area? Um, it's my destiny, 100%. Um, God placed me in the path to join our youth, and um, now I get to help lead it. Wow. Mm -hmm. So you started by just volunteering. Yep. Just saying, I see a need. I, I see a need, and you yeah. show up, and, and, and you do Be that. Be present. Yeah. Be present. Wow. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. But that's you. Yeah. That's you, because that's what many of you do. But if that's not who you are, what would you say to somebody that's sitting out here? Maybe they've never really plugged in anywhere, and they feel like that this is their home. What, what would you say to them? Find somewhere. Um, if it doesn't fit, you can find somewhere else. Wow. Um, we have openings and, <laughs> and, and youth, so um, All right. we need some people to step up. Awesome, so, awesome. Yeah. Hey, let's give her a hand again. Th thank you. You know, Jesus, Jesus had 12 disciples. Well, Pastor Ben's not here, but he felt like that he should have 12 disciples. So he said, you know what? I've got 12 guys that have a heart for something, and uh, I really would like to see this thing happen because they have a real heart to volunteer. And so I'd like for Pastor Ben's 12 disciples to join me on stage. Would you do that? They're the men in black as they come up today, all right? Are all 12 here in this, in this service? All right. I'm not going to, I can't count that far, but I think it looks like 12, something like, good looking guys, huh? Wow, look good looking guys. So they're called the Brotherhood. And uh, they attended a meeting not long ago and came back to leadership and said, you know, I don't know what it means like, but we just like to volunteer to see men changed and affected. So Pastor Ben came to me and said, what do you think? Now, here at the Father's House, we don't have a youth ministry. We don't have a women's ministry. We don't have a men's ministry. We don't have a singles ministry. We don't do all those. We're just a church where everybody's finding their place to serve. But we minister to women, children, youth, and men. And we do it through small groups. That's how we do. Plus, there are events that we have. So who's talking in this service? Steve? All right. Nice shirts, guys. I'm going to have to get me one of those. I like those. You have a different shirt there. So we're, we're a person for everybody, right? Where's your shirt, Ronnie? Come on. I know you forgot it today, right? But, so why? Why, Steve? You guys, you guys are all busy. You're all volunteering somewhere else in the church, always, right? So why would you take on something else? Well, I think I can speak for all these men. Uh, we just have a heart for... Um, uh, engaging, as you said, other men to bring them into a closer relationship with Christ. Awesome. And we, we're here to um, educate and encourage other men wow. how to be biblical men. Yeah. 
Now, Ronnie, you take the mic, you, and you're gone a lot, man. I mean, I'm in South Florida, and I'm stopped in a 7-Eleven, and I hear my voice, you Pastor Terry, PT. <laughs> and I'm thinking, man, what's he doing all the way down? You, you, so your work schedule takes you everywhere. Yes, sir. And you got a son that's going to be a future quarterback, a Hall of Famer, right? Yes, sir. And you're pouring into him. Yes, sir. Now, now, and you're one of our lead ushers on Sunday morning. Yes, sir. Then why would you volunteer for something else? For God, for and, and to serve these our our senior pastors and people. When you see other people come and they just they give their life to Christ, they're serving others. That's what it's about. Because we're the wow. face of God in earth, so wow. we serve wow. one another, and wow. that's that's what I'm here to do, and that's what I see my pastors do. That's what I see all these men do. They got their families. They got other responsibilities, but we all come together as a group of men. Wow. Well, if you're thankful for these guys, let's give them a hand. Thank you, guys. Thank you for showing up. So what about you? That's what this connection card is. So maybe your next step today is, you know, I need to recommit my life to the Lord, or I, I, I need to surrender my life to Jesus. Or you simply say, you know what? I have a real heart for. Well, the first place to start is in growth track. But if you started serving sometime and you've dropped out, then it's time to get back in. It's time to get your feet wet. It's time to make a difference with your life. I, I want to take you on a spiritual journey. I want you to know Jesus. I want you to find freedom in our fall small groups. I want you to discover your purpose and make a difference with your life. There's a haunting verse of scripture. In Ephesians chapter 4, beginning at verse 30. Look at this. Don't grieve God. Don't break his heart. Man, you'd say, well, how would I grieve God? How would I break his heart? The rest of that verse says, here's how. Because his Holy Spirit is moving and breathing in you. The Holy Spirit is the most intimate part of your life making you fit for himself. So don't take such a gift for granted. So in other words, whatever your spiritual gift is, it's not an option that you just take for granted. But you say, okay, Lord, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to dig in. And I believe this will be importantly used for you. So use that connection card and say, here's, here's what I'd like to do. Here's how I'd like to make a step. Here's, uh, don't grieve God. And then he says in chapter 5, be filled with the Spirit. Be filled. There's a day, there's a day coming for all believers. How many of you are believers today? You know, your, your sins are forgiven. Wow, that looks so great. But one of these days you have a destination called the Bema Judgment Seat of God. The Bema. The Bema Seat. It's a judgment seat of Christ. Now you're not going to be judged for your sins. Because the judgment of the unrighteous is not going to be for you. Because when God looks at you, he says, oh, I see you covered in the blood of Jesus. Your sins are forgiven. But there will be what is called the Bema judgment seat of God, where he will say to you as a believer, what did you do with what I gave you? Now, According to what you do with what he gave you now in this life determines the rewards that you have in the next life. What did you do? What did you do with your time? What did you do with your talent, your spiritual gifts, your motivational gifts? And what did you do with your treasury? What did you do with your finances? Are you using them for God? In other words, God won't say to you, why, you, why weren't you as good as Billy Graham? No. He's going to say, why didn't you use the gifts that I gave you? Why didn't you use, I gave you a great job, and I gave you a house, and I gave you cars. Why didn't you use the finances that I gave you to make a difference in my kingdom? I mean, we could look at that and we could say, oh, uh, excuse me, Lord, but uh, would you go over that with me one more time? He'll say, no, it, it is, in my, is in my word. See, I think sometimes we just think it's optional. 
We think maybe serving is optional. No, it's not optional, not for a believer. We think tithing and giving is optional, not for a believer. In fact, here at the Father's house, people say, do you have members at the Father's house? No, we don't have members. We have partners. Because you see, you can be a member somewhere and never do anything. I am a member of the Kentucky Colonels. But I've never been to a horse race there. Somebody gave me that membership. See, there are a lot of people that are members, but we're not looking for members. We're looking for partners. When you go through growth track and sign to become a partner at the Father's house, let me remind you what part of that was. That I'll protect the vision of my church with unity, that I will serve, that I will invite people, and that I will be faithful in tithing and giving. So if you're not a covenant partner here at the Father's house, I'm not talking to you right now, so you can take a little break. But if you're a partner at the Father's house, you signed that without anybody holding a gun to your head. But it wasn't just something that you covenanted here with me or with our team. But you said to God, as best as I know how, these are the things that I will do. And I will present the tithe Sean reminded me of that earlier. It's not the tithe that's left over. The tithe is the first 10% that we give. You say, why is that so important? Years ago here at the Father's house, before I began uh, constantly looking at people's giving records, and I know whether you give or whether you don't give, you say, well, why is that important? Does everybody know that? No, not everybody on staff has that. I know, Anita knows. And uh, then our Maggie in our department, and that's it, because we don't pass things around. But I tell Maggie years ago, I said, anybody that's on staff or that's in leadership, and they've been faithfully giving for a while, and then they don't give, please let me know. Because you see, if you've been faithful in giving and you stop giving, it immediately tells me there's something going on. Maybe you're in a financial crisis and you think that you'll take God's money and you pay for your bills. Well, you're only going to get deeper and deeper because the scripture says you're robbing God. Or sometimes people say, well, you know, I haven't tithed in a while and so, and God didn't give me like a blast. So I guess maybe tithing is not all that important. Then, then why, why would the Lord put that in the way that he does? Jesus said, when you give. He didn't say if, he said when. You say, well, why is that important? Well, several years ago, a long, long time ago in a faraway land, no, here at the Father's house, we were really struggling with our finances, and we kept saying, why, why are we having a trouble getting our finances up where they should be so we can make a difference in people's lives? And then I felt the Lord say, check your staff's giving record. And I looked, and I thought, what a rude awakening. People in leadership or receiving money from the Father's house that haven't tithed. And then the Lord said, remember the sin of Achan. Remember the story when God was taking the children of Israel into the promised land? God says, there's 10 cities. The first city belongs to me. Don't take anything from that. It's the tithe, really. It's the tithe. If you want the others, give him the tithe. Well, there was a young guy that just had recently a new home, three cars, and a vacation home, and he was planning a lot of other things, and uh, he had to go to the store and get a bunch of stuff. So he said, well, God doesn't need this. Joshua doesn't need this. And so he took some of God's money, the tithe. He said, well, how did that affect him? Well, it didn't just affect Achan. When the army, who had just conquered Jericho, which is like conquering one of the strongest cities there was, they went to Okahumpka. <laughs> and in Okahumpka, there's some farmers that had sticks and stones. And the army of Israel had their life handed to them by a bunch of farmers. And Joshua said, what's up? I don't understand. And God said, someone in your midst has taken what belongs to me. 
And therefore, you will not move forward with the same victory that you'll have if someone is part of you and they're stealing what belongs to me. So we put a new thing in operation with our staff and leaders. We say, we're going to check and make sure that you're a giver. And if you don't like that, you can go get a job somewhere else. We're based, and not, not arrogant, but we're just simply saying, we're moving forward. You know what we at the Father's house? We don't only ask you to tithe. We as a church tithe to other ministries around the world. We give constantly to other ministries around the world. To me, this is so important that any first-time giver that gives to the Father's house, I write you a handwritten card that says, thank you for your recent giving. We can't be who God wants us to be without people that are faithful and consistent. And then I send you a gift. I send you a book. Why? Because I believe that's how important that it is that we're faithful what God has given us. So what is that for you? Would you bow your heads with me? Maybe you're here today and maybe you've never invited Jesus into your heart and into your life. Or maybe years ago you started serving him and you've gone away from him. But today's the day to rededicate your life to him because he loves you and he cares for you. I would love to pray with you and those of you who are watching online. If you're here and say, Terry, I need to dedicate my heart to the Lord, give my heart to the Lord because I'm, I know I'm lost and I feel the Holy Spirit speaking to me today. If that's you, would you just raise your hand and make eye contact with me and let me pray with you. Thank you in the back. Others today say, yeah, that's me. Thank you. Those of you watching online, thank you, ma'am. Others today, just, just lift your hand and make eye contact. Say, yeah, that's me. Would you include me in this prayer? Or maybe you'd say today, Terry, I've, uh, I once was very faithful in my giving, but I've allowed the enemy to distract me in returning the very basic back to God. And if that's you, I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand. I'm going to ask you to raise your hand in your spirit and say, that's me. But I plan on doing something about that because I realize that God has called me. I signed a partner agreement. It's a covenant with God. And how can I expect God to bless me if I don't honor the covenant that I made with him? That's the same way with the covenant you made with your spouse. That's why the married couple's date night is so important. Let me pray for you. Would you pray this prayer with me? Father God, thank you for loving me. Thank you for dying for me. As best as I know how, I want to serve you. So I ask you to forgive me of my sins and to come into my life. I want to serve you. And Lord, forgive me for failure in areas of my daily discipline. I don't want to steal from you, but I want to be faithful in my time, in my talent, and in my treasury for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, listen, in just a minute, we're going to worship the Lord in a song. Would you take that connection card and be sure you fill it out? Whatever the Lord is saying to you is the next step. And when you leave today, be sure to drop that in the, in the bucket. Hey, listen, those of you that are that are attending my party today, right after service. You say, well, how did I get in the party? Well, you filled out a connection card as a guest, and we sent you an invitation. Once a quarter, we have what we call Meet the Pastors. And we have lunch for you. You get to meet the pastors. You get to find out things that nobody else knows about us as an individual. And we do that. So we're going to worship a little bit in song. So when everybody starts to leave in a minute and I start to leave, those of you that are invited, you receive an invitation to my party. I want you to go out those doors and in the building next door, there's balloons. There's a celebration because we're going to celebrate you that you're no longer just the first time guest. You're friends of a house. So if you've never filled out a connection card, please do that once a quarter. We give those invites. Would you stand? Would you worship with me as we sing in this song again? We're so glad. Thank you for coming today. God bless you. God bless you. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you. We praise you. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what
foothills.